Ahoy everyone, Tightrope here, and in this video we're diving into the general gameplay changes in the 1.60 patch for Company of Heroes 3. What I'm trying to test here is the unit attack behavior change because I don't really understand it myself. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this Jaeger to become enemy, then they're going to dip behind the building, run along here, run along here, then get spotted by the pathfinders over here. And I want to see, you know, how far the rifleman chase. I think you know, do they chase all the way to where the Jaegers last disappeared? Or you have what honest? happens? And then whether they, once the enemy squad has reappeared over here, do they start to try and run over here and attack them? Jaeger, standing by. So, let's give up some tactical wars action. Get the rifle to attack. Let's see what happens. So yeah, they don't really chase at all there. As soon as the squad disappears with that right click command, these guys stop in their tracks. It's interesting. I wonder if this means that you no longer need to like, when you give a right click attack command, or just an attack command in general, you don't need to hit stop afterwards kind of like you did in code 2 to stop your unit from chasing and running out of cover maybe this somewhat supplants that contact. from happening and the Jaegers reappear over here the riflemen don't go and try to attack them but it still could be a bit of an issue right like as they disappeared my riflemen did run forwards you know like forest range that could be enough to run out of cover so you probably still need to hit stop, but maybe it'll make it just like the default behavior will make it easier for players who don't go to that extra, extra hassle step of hitting stop so you don't run out of cover. Part two of the attack behavior change, I'm going to right click these riflemen on these Jaegers and they're going to start running over there to Let's attack them. them down. But then I'm going to kill the Jaegers before they get close. So they're dead. And I think previously the rifleman would stop here and not run any further, but now they run to the maximum range, 35 range away, and then they stop. So I guess Relic means that, you know, thinks that you wanted your squad to go over there besides killing the enemy unit, which they're probably right about. But that's interesting. I wonder how this will work with like anti-tank guns and stuff. Because I think a lot of the time you might give like an attack command on something. But if the tank dies, you probably don't want the anti-tank gun to run over there. Probably want it still. Like, you know, what happens if you right click a tank? You've got your AT gun in the middle of the map. You right click a tank over here. It dies. Might still want your anti-tank gun to be in the middle of the map. Where it can react to another tank if there's no more tanks over here. Like, don't push it out of position. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to experiment with it, see how it feels over time. While we're on the topic of attacking and whatnot, there is a pretty major issue with the current system that uh, I haven't had a chance to address in a video yet, so I think this is a very good opportunity to do so. So, basically, what's going to happen here is I want the riflemen to be attacking the Jaegers, they're out the back. But the Jaegers are pretty close to max range, so there's a decent chance they will, like, let's say, soft retreat, run away, go, you know, if they had a Shrek, maybe they need to run over and attack a tank somewhere else. But I don't want the riflemen to leave their cover, so I'm going to attack the Jaegers, then hit stop on the riflemen, but I do want the riflemen to attack the Jaegers. You know, and for this example, I have vision of the Jaegers, I've put some flares out the back, so... If the Jaegers run away to the back, the Rifleman will chase them. So let's see how this goes. I'm clicking fire. here. Then I'm going to hit stop. Shut your cake hole and listen up. You see this? Now they start attacking the Grandies instead of the Jaegers. So this is like a really big problem. I want to attack the Jaegers. I right click the Jaegers. I hit stop. So. I don't auto chase them as they run away. So, 
Let's see, I right click there, and then we'll move these guys away. So we can demonstrate this. I right click the Jaegers, and now my riflemen are chasing them because I still have vision. And they run out of cover, and running out of cover like this can be absolutely disastrous, right? So that's why you hit stop after giving an attack command. But hitting stop completely resets what I targeted. And then you go through the target priority system, which sees that this squad is closer and means that it prioritizes units that are closer to you. So you start attacking this one instead. So yeah, this is like a really like this. Oh, I, yeah, this is a really big problem. It doesn't seem like a big problem, but I'm telling you right now, you know, when it comes to the finesse of your controls, and if you're used to playing Company of Heroes 2, it's automatically switching your target priority system like this just because you're trying to do like a good micro maneuver by hitting stop so you don't run out of cover. This is like really, really annoying. Uh, please address this relic, okay? Please. Because this is resetting my attack priority like this when I hit stop. Uh, I don't want it to happen. And there is like a, in the target priority system, there is like a number. I think like whatever you target gets 1,000 priority, right? Which overrides anything else, like enemy unit being cover, bazookas, anything. All those numbers are like maybe add up to like 50 usually. So 1,000 is like, it. that's why it always follows your orders through this target priority system. But hitting stop seems to like completely remove that 1,000 from existing anymore. And then it recalculates everything, which I don't want to happen. And I think most players want to go back to the code two system of when you hit, when you right click target a unit, then hit stop, it keeps shooting at that unit. But then doesn't run out of cover if that unit moves out of range. That's what I'm hoping to achieve here. I haven't tested this attack and stop situation with vehicles yet, so we'll see how it goes. So what I'm going to do is right click on the Kettenkrat here with the Hellcat, because I want to kill it. I've made the Kettenkrat invulnerable for this, so it doesn't die during the course of the experiment. And then I'm going to hit stop on the Hellcat, and I believe there's an over-penetration right penalty where you know the Hellcat's maybe got like 200 penetration, the Kettenkrat has like four armor, and it sees, okay, that there's a big disparity there, so what I want to be targeting instead is this Panzer IV here, we're, we're where waiting. with... 200 penetration versus 170 armor, that's like pretty close to even. So let's see how this goes here. So you can see like it wants to target the Panzer IV like straight away, even though these are right next to each other because of that over penetration penalty. So I'm going to stop now. Yeah, now it switches targets over to the Panzer IV. So you you can see why this is a, a problem, right? Because if I right click, you know, I really want to kill a Kettenkrat, but then I have to stop with the Hellcat. Like I can't chase any further. Maybe there's a mine in front of me or, or maybe there's a Tiger wall or something like that. But I do want to kill the Kettenkrat, but then there's a, another tank right next to it. I hit stop to stop chasing. And now the Hellcat stops shooting at what I want, which is the Kettenkrat, and starts shooting at the Panzer IV. So I think this is another pretty clear example of I want stop to stop me from moving, not from stopping me from shooting at what I right clicked on. So hopefully Relic can address this now that I've made them aware of it. Having a look at vet gain and Relic have increased the amount of vet you gain from killing a vetted up enemy unit. So yeah, it already existed, but they just increased the numbers even more, allowing for a bit more vet catch up. And your know, veterancy is very powerful in this game, and you can kind of like out. purchase it, and because it gives you combat boost straight from Vet 1, it's actually a pretty big difference. So this should help you, yeah, should probably nerf these uh, bought Vet strategies a little bit by association, but also give you more chances to catch up in the late game. So I think that's kind of sensible, because Vet can, uh, yeah, this can get out a little bit out of control. Vet up units are so good in this game. But I'm not sure exactly how it works if you have to completely wipe the unit or if just like dropping one model from a got? 
Bet Squad also gets you that 60% gain, so that's what we're going to have a look at here. Switch these ranges over to enemy. So this guy got 225, this guy got 360. Is that 60% more? It sounds like about right. Always bad to do numbers. So yeah, it looks like you don't have to completely wipe the enemy. Just dropping a model in these kind of infantry engagements is also enough to get that 60% bit bonus. They've made some changes to suppression from heavy machine guns. First off, the Vickers just got a straight up buff, but every other machine gun got its suppression improved against already suppressed targets. So this will shorten the time going from being suppressed to pinned. You should get pinned faster. So we've got a spreadsheet here. Last time machine guns were good was 1.30. In 1.31, they got nerfed. And you know, I had some data. So we are going to look at the comparisons now between 1.31 and 1.60. So these times up here should be the same. I don't know if I slightly changed my methodology or whatever. But these numbers should be the same. Shouldn't be any changes in time to suppress, which is the top table. But down the bottom, time to pin is down here. And you can see it's much shorter. It's about three seconds shorter on the MG42. Four seconds-ish on the US Forces machine gun. Four seconds-ish on the Vickers. And four seconds-ish on the MG34. So about four seconds faster to pin now. Compared to how it was when machine guns were considered OP, uh, still maybe about two, two or three seconds slower than that. So yeah, not quite at that stage, kind of a middle ground. So yeah, I don't think machine guns will be overwhelmingly good after this change, but probably worth getting again. Especially, you know, it used to be so hard to suppress or to pin a unit that was suppressed in light cover in the previous patch. It was just agonizing. It just meant your machine guns couldn't protect victory points at all. If there was any light cover in the capture circle, like there often is, you know, in the mid to late game, once there's been a lot of artillery falling in there, the machine guns just couldn't do anything. You just couldn't stop them from capping. You couldn't pin them. So this should bring that back a bit. I will also say that counters and machine guns are a lot stronger now than they were in 1.30. Grenades have been buffed. Mortars have been buffed. Light vehicles are very, very good at this stage. So, yeah, I think the conditions around machine guns are also uh, more conducive to countering them too. Relic have made a big change to the height advantage mechanic. Previously, if you were 3.5 above your opponent, you would nullify their cover, so they would get zero defensive bonuses from being in cover. So that was obviously extremely strong and uh, caused a lot of problems with uh, buildings especially like rooftop buildings, they were giving you the height advantage, they were incredibly strong. It just made it tough to design maps with buildings on top because of that. It was, it was just impossible to fight against rooftop buildings from like nearby cover like walls and sandbags and whatnot. So Relic have decided to remove that nullifying element and just increase the accuracy bonus you get from the high ground. So we're going to see how that goes here. You can still see got the orange plus symbol on my cursor. Seek and see cover and return fire. We'll hit him eventually. There it goes. Engaged. So yeah, you can see the shield doesn't go red like it used to. And the amount of damage has been halved. Jaeger yeah, should do 13 per shot. And they only did seven and a half there. Let's round it up. So yeah, that's a big change. And as I said, it makes a huge difference, especially with garrisons. Uh, these rooftop buildings no longer overpowered. Light and medium mortars have been nerfed. The amount of damage they do when they get a direct hit on an enemy squad has been reduced slightly. So right in the center of the AOE has been reduced. And also on the, the rate of fire on their barrage should be about half a second slower between shells. So we'll see how this goes. We've got the uh, mortar here, brick mortar here. We're going to see how they go against some AT guns and machine guns. Alright. 
One thing that's quite interesting is like how tight the scatter is on mortars in this game, right? That's kind of where I was expecting them maybe to nerf mortars. Maybe make their scatter a bit wider instead of just nerfing their straight up damage. The rate of fire on the barrage seems fine to me. But yeah, that, that was kind of where I was expecting a bit more scatter rather than just a straight AoE nerf. One of the side effects as well is that mortars, if they get a direct hit on something like a light vehicle, because they only do like 30% damage against squads out in the open, if they get a direct hit on a vehicle, they can do crazy amounts of damage. Do the full, I think it's 100. Here it is. Look at that. A mortar just blasts your light vehicle out of the blue like that. Something you don't really expect to have happen. So it's a, it's a little bit strange, you know, it really can shock you when one of these mortars, it usually does, in this case now it's going to be 30 damage per shot against infantry, all of a sudden does 100 damage to your light vehicle. It's uh, quite jarring, I feel. While we are on the topic of mortars, there's something else I wanted to bring up about the British Heavy Mortar, and that is specifically how low it shoots shots when units are close to it, and it makes them almost impossible to dodge. You see what I'm talking about here? I'll go attack ground. So first off, the uh, Rigio Mortar, I think minimum range, maybe 25-ish. British Heavy Mortar, mm, like 10 short of that, maybe like 15-ish. So it can shoot closer as well, so that's one thing to note. Look at this, I'm gonna... Oh, hold on, we'll go attack. Attack. Let's see what happens here. Do you see that? We'll leave them on. Look at this thing. Let's go into the moon. See the huge difference in shell, like shell trajectory? And it makes this like actually really hard to dodge when you're in like close-ish range on it. So I think something needs to be done about it. And we can compare it at a long range. You need a mortar crew as well. So here you can see the Wehrmacht Mortar now pretty much the same at you know, 90 ish range or whatever that is. But at, at close range, Heavy Mortar shoots super low angle and almost impossible to dodge. Mines have been nerfed, now you can only kill two models from a squad with a single mine instead of three. So that's, you know, a pretty big nerf but it does help, you know, the uh, couple three man squads in this game. And if they got unfortunate, clumped up ran to a mine, you could lose a whole full health squad to one mine, so I think they're trying to shift things away from that. I will say that, you know, squads in Co 3, you can see they are very spread out, so compared to Co 2, which also had a 2 damage cap, uh, you don't get 2 models as often, because you, the squad is so open. I planted a mine here, cheap mods. And that's what happens very often. Just like one man off to the side, way ahead of the, everybody else. And yeah, with infantry, very often only drop one model at a time. So I'd say more now more than ever, you know, try plant your mines in more choke pointy areas where infantry will bunch up so you're more likely to hit two models. Yeah, out in the open. Unless you're trying to catch tanks, Move orders. Get you to know, it. the squads will be so spread out that you're only likely to drop one model at a time. And if you're only dropping one model for 30 munitions, you're going to be quite sad about that. Vehicle recovery has received a big overhaul here. First off, the amount of resources you have to do to start recovery has been increased slightly from 40% of the original cost to 50%. So a little bit more expensive to start recovery. But recovery times are much improved. I think light vehicles roughly half the time they used to be. Mediums, similar story. And a new recovery time for heavy tanks, 55 seconds. So I think recovery is the exact same speed on both the US forces and Africa Corps. So we'll do a little bit of a recovery race here, see how it goes. I remember somebody in one of my uh, YouTube videos said that recovery was weird, that like casemates had a really long recovery time or something like that. So we'll see how uh, that goes. We've got a Marta 250, Panzer IV, and Tiger here. And yeah, once you finish recovering a vehicle, it will be at 10% health rather than 25% health. So 
your opponent could just come up and like one shot it with just about anything. So there we go. Twenty-four health out of two forty possible. So it looks like the Marta and the Panzer IV are taking basically the exact same time. One thing I will say, you know, it's a little bit strange about these recoveries is you start the recovery and then you don't look at it. You get to this stage and you're not repairing this automatically during this. You have to like notice that it's finished recovering and then give it an extra order to repair thereafter. So it does increase the micro burden a little bit. But I could actually see recovery with these faster times being really, really good. Especially for Africa Corps. Like if somebody goes for a dive and a wreck dies on your side of the map. Like this is pretty fast now to get a, get a tank for a massive cost reduction. Like if you recover one medium tankish, you've just about paid for the recovery vehicle at that stage. So watch out, especially in those big like 4v4 modes when... Tanks end up dying behind enemy lines uh, a lot more often. And then, you know, like the whole team rotates across and kind of takes that area. You gotta watch out because yes, there'll sir. be recoveries going on and they all provide some pretty big swings in momentum, even with the cost increase. I wanted to say a few more things about repairs, mainly that I think it is far too easy to repair vehicles while they are moving. So we've got a Matilda here on 100 health, damage engine, gonna be backing away. As it happens, and then we're going to repair it with these engineers. And quite often you'll be doing this with like a smoke screen or something. You can see, the engineers are pretty much able to repair it constantly as it's driving. Look at this. And they'll be doing this oftentimes in smoke, so you can't target the engineers either. There's like no interruption because the Matilda's quite slow in the first place with damage engine. You can just basically repair it as it drives away. This is, I think, very, very Shoppers, stupid. And it applies to a lot of other things as well. It's just far too easy to repair vehicles while they are moving. And it can actually be very difficult to target the repairing engineers as well because of the target priority system thing that was implemented. Like if the repair engineers are like right next to this, so we spawn in a uh, unit for me. But yeah, sometimes I want to target the engineers, but Wherever they are overlapping with the tank, I can't right click them anymore. So it actually makes it quite difficult to target the European units as well. And this is pr probably most prominent against like Africa Corps, try and target units that are appearing 250s. It's very hard to actually target them. You know, you can go for the uh, unit icon card thing here, but I think most people's instinct is to try and target them naturally and because of that system change where you want to have decided what you want to target instead of just letting you target what you're actually clicking on you, it can actually be quite hard to right click on the engineers and punish this kind of play as well so yeah I would like to see it harder to repair vehicles while they are still moving the speed at which you can build sandbags has been nerfed so I'm going to try it out here in the most common scenario building two pieces of sandbag behind a medium point as you're capping it See how it goes now. We've got US engineers here versus Pies over here. Pies did get a capture bonus this pa uh, patch. So. Defensive yeah, take that into account. Okay, so yeah, you can still get your two stacks of sandbags up while capping a point with pretty much anything. It's just, you're probably more likely to be found while in construction. And it's just, yeah, going to take you twice as long, so you might take some return fire. They also nerfed these sandbags on coastals massively. I think they said from 1.8 seconds to 8 seconds. <laughs> wow. So we'll have a look at how that goes. I mean, coastals, I think it might have even been good for coastals to... Just like in a fight, if they weren't in cover, build some sandbags to get the cover bonus. Because they put them up so fast. And they wouldn't take very much damage during that process. And then you'd have a fight to cover for the rest of the fight, you know? 
But yeah, on uh, faster to cap points, maybe like cutoffs and stuff, the slower build times, you're going to feel it. Because even with the faster coastal build time, we capture the point before completing both of them here. Snipers have been buffed. Their health has been increased from 80 to 100. Basically, I think ever since snipers got their target size increased, I think it was from 1.3 to 1.5, nobody's built snipers. This was like probably nine months or more ago. Nobody's built snipers. They just died way too easily. So yeah, instead of reducing the target size back down again, they have increased their health. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, probably a sensible change because, as I said, nobody's building them. On top of that, they also got a manpower cost reduction from 340 to 300. So yeah, I think snipers, certainly a lot of people are going to be trying them out again. And they do have a pretty good rate of fire in this game as well. If you can just sit there and continuously snipe. They, uh, they can stack up the body counts real fast. Detecting stealth and... Detecting stealth or camouflage units has received a well overdue overhaul on this patch. I was complaining about this during the 1.5 patch notes. And they have listened. So first off, all units have received a slight increase in their detection range, going from 10 to 12.5. But on top of that, each faction has a certain set of units that have double that range. So going from 12.5 up to 25. So they'll see stealth or camouflage units from a lot further away. So if you use forces, it's the 4x4, scouts and their variants, so pathfinders, artillery, observers. For Brits, we've got the Dingo sections that are upgraded with the Ricky package, and the Humber. For Africa Corps, the Recon Tractor, the Krautschutzen and Panzerpios. And for Wehrmacht, we've got the 221, Pioneers, and the Kittenkraut. So these exact units might need some tweaking and whatever. In the future but i think this is a great first step to uh, how they're handling detection of stealth units because up until this point a lot of stealth units have been pretty overpowered i have to say they've also made it such that recon planes will detect stealth units now which is a good thing similar to what we had in company Ferris 2 with the u.s forces air support center recon plane detecting all these all these wehrmacht stealth units Interesting. Seems like they've got different recloak times, right? AT guns are very slow. Infantry very fast. Kitten also quite fast. But yeah, different to Company Pharaohs 2, flares are also revealing stealth units in this patch now. So didn't happen in Code 2, but now flares also can help counter stealth units. Obviously, these units can run out of the area and then they will uh, be able to go stealthy and not. Maybe this is a bad example because they don't have the ability to stealth out in the open. I'll teleport the kitten out here. So yeah, it doesn't add like a debuff to them where they are unable to re-camouflage for a certain period of time once they're revealed by this. If they just get out of the detection zone, they'll be able to re-camouflage quite quickly in most cases. Fresh off me making a big video about snares, but I have decided to make quite a lot of changes in this area, which I am happy to see. First off, they have increased the damage of anti-tank grenades from 110 to 120. So Panzerfaust was already 120, brought the others up to that stage, which is important because there are quite a, full, quite a lot of like 240 health vehicles in this game. So that will now mean that one anti-tank grenade with no extra fire will be engine damage. And that's also another change, which is in the bug fixes. Engine damage will now happen at exactly half health. You don't have to be below half health. It used to be like 49% health was required, but now it will happen at exactly 50%. So that's another change from my video. Relic have also increased the amount of damage that snares do when squads hit Vet 2. So it says down here, Veteran 2 deals an additional 40 damage. It says that here. It doesn't say that in the veterancy uh, descriptions. So it's a little bit weird, but yeah, it says it down here. Throw it on this, double check it. So yeah, it's doing 40 more damage than what we saw earlier. I think this does make a lot of sense because a lot of vehicles in Co3 actually gain health as they vet up. Or, you know, if they're Africa Core, you may gain health from the armory upgrades. And that kind of made snares fall off in effectiveness like quite sharply in the late game. 
So now vetted up squads will be keeping up with vetted up units in terms of snaring power. And also just in terms of like chain snaring down a vehicle. Plus 40 damage uh, does make quite a lot of difference. The speed of anti-tank grenades has also been increased. I wasn't sure exactly what this meant, so I recreated my test from my snare video of snaring a kitten crud as it drives out of range. After the changes, the snare lands on the kitten crud much earlier, resulting in it going off at about 50 range away, whereas before the kitten crud could have gone over 100 range away before it went off. Also important to note that the Coastal's Oto didn't receive any of these changes, so I should just do the regular 80 damage, same as always, and doesn't gain any extra damage from VET. Green Deers have also received a huge buff to their snare, first off a cost reduction by 5 munitions, okay that's a little bit nice, but then at VET 1 it gains plus 5 range, look at this, VET 0, 18, VET 1, 23, VET 3 plus another 5 range, 28 range on your Panzerfaust to VET 3. That's crazy. Okay, this is quite an interesting idea for Green Deers, but I I don't think this last one, I think it's too long, basically, because you can almost Faust as far as you can see, and that becomes a bit of an issue on the other side as the Faust recipient, because I have experienced this earlier in Co 3's history, these really, really long-range Panzerfausts, and the problem was that, you know, you'll be over here doing something else, the Green Deer would pop in division and Faust you, and before you even moved the camera here, before you even noticed that an enemy appeared, you'd already be Fausted before you could react like at all but when Faust were like similar length to this now. So I I don't know about the VET 3, that might be a bit much, but it's an interesting idea giving them uh, more Faust range at VET 1, especially because, you know, Panzergrenade Company and just general like Snares plus AT gun play has been a bit underwhelming in the recent patches. And Green Deers himself as well, so pretty cool change here to uh, the Green Deers Faust. And the final one on snares that was at the bottom of the bug fixes list, I believe they have fixed now the snare push bug. So what would happen previously, if you tried to activate a snare and the model that was trying to do the snaring animation got pushed by a vehicle, the snare would completely deactivate it and the squad wouldn't try to reactivate it as the tank was driving away or the vehicle was driving away on the other side. So your snares would never go off. And it was kind of weird as well because the sneering model would move, but all the rest of the squad models wouldn't move at all. So uh, as part of this test, what I've done is I've made the officer model the highest health, which I believe means that he will always be the one doing the snares. So I'll try and drive right through the middle of him here. Let's see how we get on. Is he calling Tommy? Holy Dixon Harry's here. Well, I think I might have been a bit late on it. But promising signs to start things off. Lazy bug, come on, chaps. War's not over yet. Hmm. You, you heard? Yeah, well, I've tried it quite a few times, and I couldn't seem to get this near bug to trigger. Well, maybe I got it to happen once, but... Seems to be a lot less uh, prevalent than it was before. Anti-tank guns have received a rate of fire buff, 0.25 of a second faster between shots. So that's all right for them. Pack here. But uh, one thing that I did want to talk about is the nice LG40. I did look at it, and uh, even though it's not mentioned in the patch notes, it looks like it also got the rate of fire buff, which is good. But what I do want to mention is back when anti-tank guns got the accuracy buffs, it? which Weapon must have been ready. like 10 months ago now, the LG40 did you not get any support? accuracy buffs. So the LG40, I think it's long range, accuracy is 0 0.04, and the pack is 0.047-ish. So a lot better. This is almost like 100% chance to land on medium and max range, whereas this is significantly worse. And that's a real problem for the LG40 because it doesn't have a lot going for it. You know, it sh arrives early in the game, mainly to try and counter light vehicles. And because it's got such bad accuracy, it keeps missing on them. So it's useless against light vehicles. Weapons it does less damage, 120 versus 160. So it's got bad damage. And then it's got bad penetration, so it doesn't scale into the late game at all either. So it's just really bad. It desperately needs uh, the same up, accuracy buff that all the other anti-tank guns got like 10 months ago. 
This has been driving me up the wall. Hopefully this can be addressed. These ultralight vehicles, the Weasel 4x4 Crutchitson and 250, have had their reloads changed and set to the same as their cooldown. So you won't notice any difference between firing regularly and reloading. And the developer said they did this because there's no reloading animations, basically. We're on it. So you as the player F using these would be like, why isn't my like, vehicle shooting? Because, and you wouldn't know because there was no reload animation. So if you're unfamiliar with the noise. firing cycle, this oh. is a burst, okay, burst, cooldown. Burst, cooldown. So now the reload will be the exact same as the cooldown. So it'll just seem like continuous firing. So this is like a very, very slight DPS increase, but I think, you know, that whole firing cycle will take like nine cycles before it reloads on the weasel. So it's probably like saving you two seconds every minute. You know, it's minuscule, basically doesn't matter, but just more of a continuity feel. You know, you don't want to be like in a head to head fight and then all of a sudden your vehicle's just not shooting for an extra three seconds in one particular skirmish, and then you're in a bit of trouble. And for the final general gameplay change, when squads load into troop transports, now it's a standardized time of half a second. It used to scale with the number of moles in the squad, but now it's just a flat 0.5 of a second. So I think I did some testing on this like way back when the game first came out, and I found that four oh, moles and below would get in transports like pretty smoothly, but six oh, models... On, with, uh, it got ugly sometimes with like weird hang-ups. So we'll see how it goes here. Four men loading into the 250. Going in pretty smoothly there. Cross the Tory into the mid truck. Hmm. Interesting. Now paratroopers into this. Cross the Tory did seem to take quite a long time like standing milling around right here. See how they go getting out. Nice couple more times. Interesting. So it seems like this has got like a rear load. And this has got like a side load applied to it, right? Nothing lasts forever. Say goodbye to the fancy tractor. Oh, so didn't mention any changes to uh, how fast you can unload, but maybe they made some changes there as well. Let's have a look. I'm going to do a moving drop off. So it does slow you down still, but not quite Co 2 levels of like completely unimpeded, but pretty smooth getting out. Should we try to do like a moving pickup of a uh, squad as well? See how that goes. 250 driving past, try to get the cross to in here. Okay, well that didn't, that didn't happen, it can't, can't do a driving pickup. I thought I saw a bit of that with my uh, over here. Maybe it's just because of how fast they get into this. Interesting. As always, a huge thank you goes out to my Patreon backers, and if you enjoy my coverage, I really hope you consider signing up on there.